Okay, one, we always knew there was something up with Cindy. Two, Courtney gets character regression. And three, the janitor's identity is revealed. What's up, YouTubers of the world? Making Geek Mixer here to give you guys my review on this week's episode of Star Girl. As finally, we are moving into Cindy, aka Sheev, as her, as the arch enemy of Court of Courtney Whitmore, aka Star Girl. Now we know this is going to be a two-part episode, and this was just the first part. But did we get a lot in this first part, where this episode was pretty much all about Cindy? We all have always seen her for the past few episodes, just pretty much being the queen. Queen Bee, Queen Bee mean, mean Girl and everything, but here we learn about who she is outside of outside of her school and everything. And yeah, no surprise there, because I did my research about this girl before before like this episode and stuff, and knew that she was already Dragon King's daughter and everything, and and that she's supposed to be the arch enemy of Court of Courtney Whitmore going forward and stuff. So I knew all that, but what I didn't know here was that during the whole conversation she was having with with her father here, as we're finding out all sorts of things. It's almost like saying that is Cindy, is Cindy a lab experiment? Because we definitely found out this mother that she's been having with her since we saw in episode two and right here, she's just like a servant or something. Like she's not real, like she's an experiment or something. Because that's definitely what it feels like here. But more than that, we find out this Cindy girl is, first off, this relationship she's been in with, Hen with Henry aka Brainwave Jr. soon to be, it's all really just part of a plan. She doesn't really care about him. She doesn't even really care about all the stuff that goes on in her so-called normal life with school and everything. And said, no, she just wants to go ahead and be a part of the Injustice Society of America, which we learn is located under her house. But we also learn throughout this episode that there are lots of hidden hidden entrances in the school that can lead to the Injustice Society's hideout and everything. But more than that, we find out here that that Cindy, who just doesn't want to do anything with this whole school life and everything, just wants to be a part of the Injustice Society of America right off the bat. It's just like telling her dad, I'm tired of all this. I'm tired of waiting. Just let me join. Let me find out the identities of this new JSA and help out and stuff. In other words, she doesn't want anything to do with all this high school stuff. It's just a bother for her. Just something she doesn't want to do. She sees what her father is and knows what he does and she just wants to be a part of it but her father just continues to tell her no and stuff so really this and what's more we also see her and Courtney actually bond in this episode they mostly because when you think about it they have some sort of similar similarities with their lives just a tiny bit though but to still see that part where her and Courtney sort of bond in a little bit during the whole during the whole um science experiment here where she also revealed to us that her dad has been a, who is a chemist and has been involved in teaching her this stuff since she was four is is very something interesting indeed to see but more but moreover on that later though I still can't believe how th these two ended up starting to make it a bond. But then again, it you'd be surprised, really. I can't say I'm that surprised, though. Because one thing I've come to learn is some people you don't really talk with that much. You soon learn that you have a lot more in com common with them than you think. And yeah, these two started to feel some, some bondingness to them that would have almost made them look like friends here. But either way, though, when it came to 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 Cindy and taking up the the costume at the end of the episode and taking on Courtney one on one, man, that was some great action right there. Now I don't think I can say it was better than last week's action. I feel that one was a little better, mainly because of them being in the light. There not not being that many lights in this one. It's not that I couldn't see or anything. It's just all the dark lights and everything, and 
it just didn't hit me as well as episode six did. But it was still a great fight nonetheless. And and to find out that when Courtney damaged Cindy's face, it just recovered so quickly. Just what is she? I, I am very interested to see what more we're going to get from her here. But I also mentioned about Brainwave. And now that I've finished talking really much about Cindy, let me real quick go into some short stories here. Such as Brainwave, Brainwave's son Henry here. We're seeing him starting to develop his abilities, and the reason Cindy's actually been going out with him is because she's supposed to be on a mission to know if he has powers. Of course, Cindy doesn't think he has them yet, and funny how she doesn't figure it out, considering how he's had all those headaches and stuff, and you would think that's meaning that his powers are coming in. But speaking of Henry, yes, his powers are coming in, and he's starting to figure it out, too. Now, we do know this source material stuff is from Je Jeff Johns' Stripes and Stargirl and Stripes comic book and stuff, but I haven't fully read all of it yet, and if we don't know if Rainwave will be a villain or a hero in this, but I am definitely can't wait to see it, because if I'm not mistaken, I think that one's going to be a two-parter as well, and if it does, we'll see where it goes from here and stuff. But what I did like knowing is that after all this time, Cindy and Henry, their relationship's just bland. It's just a fake thing. At least in Cindy's eyes. Henry doesn't know that, but considering how his father is in a coma and everything, he's not really thinking about anything of all that stuff. As he showed when he told Cindy he's not going to come to homecoming and she can just go with someone else and stuff. And speaking of which, this whole homecoming thing... We're seeing here that Cameron, aka Icicle, Icicle's son, is is in, has a crush on Courtney, and he asked her out during the middle of a football game we had in this week's episode. And yeah, she's showing interest in it. Now I don't think any of us can be surprised with that. I'm pretty sure we were all suspecting that was gonna happen right there. After after their first little interaction there, it was kind of hinting at that. Although I do admit it does feel kind of like rushing out of nowhere maybe if we had like the other few episodes to give us a little more hints to it we w i have been a little more k with this but it's still nice to know either way but some one's gotta wonder if they'll continue this relationship when their costume side personnels become enemies because i'm feeling that's like what's gonna happen especially when star girl and the rest of the new jsa finish off the isa isa but we don't know if they'll do that in this season or next season. So only time will tell on that one. But now, let's go ahead and go into the kids and the Pat and the JSA, the new JSA, which where it started off at the beginning of this episode, I liked how it was showing each of these four new kids each of these four kids, Courtney, Yolanda, Rick, and Beth, and how they are now having a new a new life with the new with new new identities as being superheroes and stuff and it's going to be their first year first day of training and all and they show each of them and all excitement and stuff about what's to come and that being what's going to come after school and i liked how they had that one shot of them starting to walk through that hallway together like they're all new they're all good friends here now, and they're all ready and set to take on the world. I liked how that marching there was going right there. But one thing I didn't really like in this episode was the character aggression of Courtney. So, like, let me get this straight. All this time she's been ignoring Pat, and then last week's episode, she's starting to respect, she was respecting Pat much better this time compared to this episode, where in last week's episode, she's telling everyone there's more to Pat than they're giving him credit for. And in the end, when she was saying that she was going to be a leader, trying to make everyone stick together like a team, but they didn't listen, and then she goes talking with Pat about that, and it almost sounded like she finally learned her lesson. But here, no. She just goes back to, like, square one. Like, how she was in episode one one through, through I guess, uh, last uh No, one through five. Yeah, let's put it that way, I guess. We can put it that way. Which is very strange. What was with that character regression? I don't get it there. Because, yeah, they were all going to have training... 
Pat was going to train all of them, which he did with some made-up dummies. And let me just first say, when he introduced Sportsmaster and saying how he he's the best fighter he's seen, and or better yet, not exactly that, he's just saying that there's a better fighter, he hasn't met him yet. Well, all I can say to that is, yes, I know this is Earth 2 and stuff, so we don't know if there's been a Batman or a Superman or whatnot, but all I will say is, yeah, Pat, you haven't met the better fighters out there, because even if this is Earth Earth 2 and stuff, I don't think we can deny that there are some of the best fighters in the DC Universe in general out there that have got to be on this Earth. So no doubt and question on that end and stuff. But yeah, until he actually meets them, yeah, I guess you can't blame Pat for saying that and stuff. But it was during this time where, like, Cor Courtney, during this whole time when he was giving them the lowdown and profiles on each of these each of these villains here, she just kept interrupting him, disrespecting him, and acting like, hey, I've been doing this longer than them, so I think I'm ready to do this. And she even, and she even already crashed up all the training sets and everything that not only Pat, but even Yolanda, Rick, and Beth were upset with her. And because it's, and they were just like, well, girl, what are you doing? We we didn't even get a chance to do any of this stuff ourselves. We still need need some information on these guys and all that stuff. And yeah, that's also right. She's a newbie at this. She needs the training more than them. And yet she just goes off and do all of that. I know Courtney's a teenager and stuff. But yeah, this whole character regression part, that just didn't make sense to me. And one, and it kind of shows once again of her being so hasty and not listening, which is what led into that big fight with her and her and Cindy at the end, which she would have been destroyed if not for the janitor of the school, who I'm sure some of y'all are finally finding out who he is, because we were already given hints of it at the beginning and middle of this episode, such as when he went to his janitor janitor closet where obviously no one seems to go because he goes in there he has this calendar of medieval times and then he had his sword there showing that people have never been in there otherwise they would have been reported that they really would have and I, as and only and then finally when it looked like she 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 was gonna get star girl who comes to a rescue but no one but justin the shining knight Yes, he's the Shining Knight, if you guys haven't figured it out yet. I gave y'all a little hint, and I decided not to tell y'all, because I wanted y'all to figure that out for yourself. So I hope y'all figured it out by this one. Because, yes, Shining Knight, he, we saw him in the Justice League animated TV series. Back in Justice League Unlimited, and the episode, uh, what was that, Par Paramount Act or something? I can't remember exactly, but it was where all these powerless powerless people who were part of the Justice League were taken on that General Lant Lant Island guy who became a Hulk-sized person. But either way, when he showed up and then when he hit himself, he actually called Pat by his former he superhero named Stripesies, meaning he must have been part of the Justice Society of America or at least work with them and stuff. So I am very interested to see where that goes. But one thing you gotta take away from this is that when Pat was looking for for Courtney, she did call her by her name as she as Cindy was escaping. So I think Cindy now knows of Star Girl's identity, which could be something troubling going forward. But speaking of troubling things, there are a other few other things we got here. Some things that caught me by interest, and that was for one, Mike, and how he's feeling about Court and Pat, Courtney and Pat's relationship. Actually, when they were at the game and when Pat left, he went into a conversation with Courtney about how, like, spending so much time with with Pat and that's getting to him. He's not liking that. Kind of funny considering how he was getting to, getting to closer to um, uh, Barbara last week's episode. But there's one thing I will say. he is, I can understand him and stuff, but I also liked how this finally gave us a chance to look at the relationship between Courtney and Mike. And I hope we can see more of them and those two can become close because that's kind of one of the things we've been missing there. The family drama that we were supposed to be getting here. So I like that they injected this in there and make us know a little about it. But also, I'm liking how they're injecting Icicle looking like he's developing feelings for Barbara. Now, 
we know she's not going to return the feelings back, but one's got to wonder how she'll react when she learns about Courtney and Pat's secret superhero life, that it might cause her to lean on him for a bit, but not fully be with him. That's just because she's angry and a bit mad right now that she's just going to take it out a bit and stuff. That's just my guess. And speaking of Icicle, he actually gave his son some, some support, some moral support as he was as his son was telling him he wanted to ax out Courtney and I can't and I wonder how much more of this can go on and what else we'll be seeing from all this but either way guys I still love this episode and I can't wait to see more of it and if I'm going to give this episode a rating, I'm going to have to give it a 7.5 out of 10, mostly because I didn't like that character regression of Courtney, but as for everything else, I liked it, it was great, and I can't wait wait to see more of it, especially with the whole Shining Knight and more, and since this is the first part, we're going to get She Part 2 and see where we go from there, and hopefully Courtney's finally learned her lesson here. But until then, guys, I'm going to leave it all at that. And hey, if you're enjoying my videos, all you got to do is click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to be notified when I make more videos. And until then, Mega Geek Mixer, signing out. Bye!